Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another uh, Walking Dead video. So in this one here, I'm going to be doing a QA and a video. So first of all, thank you so much for all of your questions. If you do want to take part in these Q&As, definitely go follow the Discord. Uh, the server name is Appetite for the Dead. And uh, yeah, I ask for questions there weekly. I think I may have actually missed a q and I'm not entirely sure, but uh, it looks like there's a bunch of questions that I didn't get to. So what I'm going to do is just do a second Q&A. So a lot of those questions I'll get into most likely tomorrow. So I'll do two Q&As there. Uh, I'll record that one tomorrow, though. So if you do want to take part in that one, just definitely post a bunch of questions there. Like, I guess at some point today or whatever. And um, yeah, so thank you for all your questions. But let's, uh, I guess let's get into the first question here. Well, actually, first, I got to say what I always say. So definitely make sure to hit subscribe if you do want to get all my Walking Dead content like this. We're like 50 something days away way uh until the ones who live airs and that trailer is going to be out any day now so as soon as that drops if you do want to get a full trailer breakdown definitely make sure to be a subscriber but the first question here there's a few unanswered questions we got from the finale of the show do you think some of them will be answered like heath and virgil's disappearance for example um i don't think so heath it's possible uh with virgil i don't think so because virgil you know, in terms of where his story went, it really kind of seemed like he was just in Alexandria. Like, Connie and Virgil went to Alexandria afterwards, and it was like, he, I don't know what happened to him. He literally just disappeared. Like, he was in a really phenomenal episode. And honestly, I remember that episode because it was like, it was like, a, it was a great episode for Connie and Virgil. And obviously, we already knew that Connie was a really amazing character at that point. But like, Virgil, I was just like, wow, I want to see more from him. And I thought that was sort of the introduction to him becoming a main character and that, you know, he was introduced through Michonne leaving. And I thought, like, that's really awesome, you know, just to have a character introduced to us in that way, like through Michonne's departure and having it connect to Rick and just like where he was at. I thought that was kind of cool, like a really cool connection there. Maybe, you know, Virgil can talk with Judith and Daryl and talk about some of that stuff there, but like nothing came of it. There was nothing of any of that. Virgil never mentioned anything about Michonne. So to me, I think that was really, that decision was made, I think, because of how big the story was. I think, and I really do believe that if The Walking Dead was supposed to get, you know, like the, the 14, 15, 16 seasons or whatever it was supposed to be, if they were going to go on that long, we probably would have got a lot more of those story um, ideas or those story elements or whatever. I think that we would have saw Virgil, you know, play a bigger role in the story. There was likely going to be a lot of that, that they would have focused on, but because, you know, they found out season 11 was the last season. It was going to be a bigger season, but still, it was only like 24 episodes, whereas I think two seasons would have been like 32. I think they just sort of had to ignore a lot of characters. And that's why I think even like some of the like the side characters that were bigger characters, you know, a lot of them kind of got ignored in the last couple of episodes. Like not completely ignored, but it wasn't like, you know, I remember Kari Payton, actually, the actor who plays Ezekiel, he was saying he wasn't really satisfied with the ending for his character. And I think, you know, I could see that, you know, it was, it's not just Ezekiel, but I can see that with really almost every character. Like, there wasn't really a satisfying ending in general for anyone, I feel like. Like, there was an ending, and it kind of ended the Commonwealth arc, but I don't think a lot of people cared too much about that. It was just more of like, well, here's an ending here's sort of, uh, you know, how we can kind of end this with all the characters, but it, it didn't really feel too personal to all the characters, you know, and especially because we know the spinoffs are happening and all that, and any of those characters could come back at some point, so I think that that is just, yeah, it's definitely unfortunate, you know, I, I definitely, like, I hope we do see some of those characters again, because, I mean, obviously those characters were incredible to have on the show for many, many years, and in terms of what I said, you know, with the show having, like, 14, 15, 16 seasons, that was, like, the rumored apparent plan that they were going to do, which was, like, uh, Daryl and Carol were going to leave, and I think the Daryl and Carol spinoff would still happen, but Maggie and Negan, I guess, would still be on the show. It depends on, I guess, the uh, if, you know, Lauren Cohen and Jeffrey Dean Morgan wanted to stay, but that was apparently what was going to happen, is they were just going to keep continuing the story past the comic and go into a bunch of other stuff, and then at some point, Daryl and Carol would come back, I guess, for the final season, and then they would sort of wrap it up in that way, right? But it looks like, obviously, they changed it, and that's obviously a really good thing. And I think that's why a lot of characters like Virgil and, and I mean, Heath is a little different, but we'll talk about Heath in a second, but I think that's why with Virgil, it just, it felt so kind of insane for that character to just, to just be gone like that, right? Like the character was literally like, you know, but a pretty big role in Michonne's final episode. And then he is just sort of written off, like whatever, like it's never addressed. And it's just, it's so like, but I do get it from a writing standpoint, you know, they had to rush it right away. Like they were told season 11 is the last season. And so that's why everything kind of felt rushed. And that's why I always went back and said, they really should not have done the Reaper arc. I think that was just, I think the Reaper arc was probably a plan that they had 
And that was going to be something that was going to be more of like all season and sort of, you know, connect with the Commonwealth arc a little bit. But if they were going to get a season 12, 13, I think that arc would have been expanded a lot more. But I think they had to just completely get rid of it. And then I think that's where, you know, I would really like to know what the original plans were there because it really felt like everything was rushed really in season 11. And I, w- I want to know what their plan was after season 10 going into season 11. I don't know if we're ever going to know that. I- I'm sure at some point. But with Heath, I think it's possible that they could bring him up. Like, I, like I-, I think that, you know, normally maybe you don't, but... Because Scott Gimple was the showrunner when Heath was on the show, and now he's the showrunner for The Ones Who Live, I could totally see him just like, like, maybe we don't see Heath, right? Because maybe the actor doesn't want to come back. But maybe they make a mention and they sort of wrap up, you know, a part of that story. I think that could happen. I honestly, I could totally see a, a part where, or a scene where, you know, Jadis just kind of mentions something and says like, oh, I did this before with with Heath or whatever. And Maybe she's just talking with Rick. Like I could totally see a line like that, which is just like confirmation to us that like, okay, so now we know what happened to Heath. And that's basically that, you know, could you see Rick Grimes being or becoming the president of the CRM? I could see that for the character. I just don't know if they're going to go in that direction with the character, because I've sort of always been under the impression that like, yeah, he became the leader and he was always the leader because he just kind of, you know, he just took on that responsibility. But Based off of like past interviews and all that, it always felt like, you know, Andrew Lincoln, in terms of how he viewed Rick Grimes, was like, he's the leader and he's doing all this stuff, but at some point he's not going to be. And it's because he doesn't really want to do that. He wants, you know, to, he wants someone else to do that. And I, I just don't think, you know, based off of that vision and, and all that for the character and, and doing this show, I don't think he would ever take on that sort of responsibility like that. Unless the people wanted him, unless everyone's like, no, we want Rick Grimes to be the leader. I think in that situation, it makes sense. I could totally see it happening then. But other than that, I don't think Rick would want to be in a position like that. You know, I think it would have to be more from like, you know, just people wanting him to actually be their leader. Q&A, do you think you would ever review your trailer predictions after watching the shows to see what uh, you were right or wrong about? I think it would be cool. Yeah, I would totally do that. I think that would be a lot of fun. Honestly, like it would be fun to see how wrong I was. (laughs) I think for me, that would just be, it'd be kind of cool just to kind of see like, not even that, like how much I did get right or just to see what my mindset was at at the time. Like, okay, this makes a lot of sense kind of thing. So yeah, I would totally, I, I would do that. Yeah. Q&A. The trailer is rumored to be releasing after the new year in early January. What day do you see them dropping it? Well, I guess we're in the new year now, so I'm guessing that that rumor is probably, yeah, that makes sense that it is coming out in uh, early January. I think that it makes sense. I think, honestly, the day that I see them dropping it is at some point next week. I don't think it's going to be out this week because I think there would be a lot more promotion for it. I feel like, like, honestly, next Monday or Tuesday, there's going to be a teaser that drops that's like, 24 hours or tomorrow or something like that and then the next day is going to be when we get it and i just think next week we're going to get the trailer for sure i think that right now you know there might be tv spots there's some new information that comes out this and that but i think for sure next week we're going to get that trailer first of all happy new year's uh 2024 is your year thank you so much i I, I hope so uh q a dead city's filming location has been changed to massachusetts uh do you think we will see a different location like boston or Massachusetts offer tax breaks kind of like uh, Georgia for the main show. I'm not entirely sure in terms of the business side to it all. I think if we were to see newer locations like Boston and stuff, that would be really cool. I mean, I guess that's if that is like all true. Like if they are filming in Boston, which I guess that type of information probably will be confirmed at some point very soon, because obviously if they're filming there, we're going to see that, right? I think that'd be so cool because... Yeah, it makes sense. Like Dead City, it doesn't have to be New York City. You can sort of travel anywhere you want. So I guess traveling to Boston and stuff, I think would be kind of cool just to be in like different locations and stuff. And you can kind of go everywhere. You can go back to New York City as well. But introducing newer cities and stuff like that, I think would be a really cool idea. And I think that, yeah, I mean, I think if that did happen, that would honestly be really, really incredible. So I I hope so. I hope that does happen. Q&A, with all the talk about HBO doing their own adaptation of The Walking Dead, how would you feel if HBO leaned into the Telltale's version, doing the story following Clementine and Lee? I mean, I do want that story no matter what. Like, I really do just, I want that story. So yeah, I'd be totally up for them doing an adaptation of that story like like a clementine and lee story is something that i've wanted for a very long time and i I think that it was probably you know a couple of years ago was too soon to do it because it was just too close to the release of those games i feel like now we're getting into that territory though where you could probably still do that and i think that once you know for sure once this era of the walking dead is over 
in the next couple of years, like three, four years down the road, um, you could start to get into that, you know, start to tell different stories like that. Maybe you connect it with this version of The Walking Dead, or maybe you just sort of do something different. I don't know. But I could totally see them doing that at some point because it's something that uh, I think everyone would really like. Fans would really like to see an actual television show of that. It would be interesting to see how they would change a lot of things, though, because a lot of that show is based off of like decisions that you make, right? I think you would have to ignore a lot of that, though, and you would have to just go with, you know, the, the decisions that make the most sense for the story. I don't think you could do like an interactive thing. Like, I wouldn't really want that. I think just make the decisions for us to see. And uh, yeah, the guy, I definitely would like that. If it's HBO, AMC, or whoever it is, I would, I would love to see an actual live version of this show. Q&A, since all the new spinoffs have had the new intro uh, theme so far, do you think that will be the case for The Walking Dead, uh, The Ones Who Live? And if you do, do you think they'll remix it with the, the original theme or just have a new or entirely new one? I, I think that they're probably going to have an entirely new one. That's my guess. I think that, uh, you know, they don't have to really go back to that theme specifically. They could, I guess, if they wanted to, but I don't know if there's like rights things or I'm guessing AMC probably has it in there where they own that song and they can use it whenever they want. So yeah, I guess they probably could do that. I, I think it'll probably be something entirely new though. I don't think they'll use any sort of uh, thing from the original theme, but it would be cool if they did. But I'm also kind of at this point, I want like newer themes and stuff because like Dead City and Daryl Dixon, I just I love those theme songs. And so to give the ones who live something new, I'm just I I'm all for that. Q&A, who do you think we will see first if the ones who live gets multiple seasons from other Walking Dead universe shows? I mean, like Morgan, Daryl, maybe, etc. I feel like it's going to be Morgan. I was thinking of it being like other characters in terms of like characters from World Beyond and all that. but it really feels like at this point that it's going to be Morgan because of some of the stuff that they were sort of teasing uh, or not teasing, but I guess, you know, hyping in terms of like, you know, marketing and stuff for the show. It just kind of feels like it's going to be Morgan because I just think that it makes a lot of sense in terms of where the character is going. They literally set that up. Like that's one of those things when it comes to where they end some of these characters stories where I'm just kind of like, you know, sometimes it doesn't make a lot of sense and we're all questioning things and can this happen, this and that. I feel like in the next couple of years, we're going to look back at this and be like, yeah, obviously Morgan was going to be in that show at some point because that's literally where his story ended is he went out there to go and look for Rick, right? Like if you literally think about it, Morgan is out there looking for Rick. Michonne is out there looking for Rick. Obviously, we know Michonne's going to find Rick, but Morgan, I think that also makes a lot of sense. I don't know if it's going to be a, a season one thing. And that's one of those things that if they were to do a season two, that could be the reveal is Morgan shows up at the end and maybe it's like a cliffhanger sort of thing, right? And then people would really freak out because, I mean, it's Morgan. He's back. He's going to be in season two of the show. And then just the hype at that point, right? So I think that, that that's a strong possibility. Um, but yeah, out of, out of any other character, that's, it's kind of hard to say. I feel like, uh, Morgan makes the most sense, but yeah, anyways, I'm gonna leave it here. Definitely post all your thoughts down below. Hope you guys all enjoyed the video and, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.